Hello everyone, welcome to Orchids and Tropicals. Today I wanted to do a review about mosquito bits. Now, it says right here, kills mosquitoes and something about fungus nuts. Also effective, also controls fungus nuts. <laughs> okay. Um, previously I was using mosquito dunks and I have another video about that. They're a little donut shaped um, compressed discs that you put in your water and it works the same way. They are both use the same active ingredient which is Bacillus thuringiensis israelensis and um, it's a gram positive rod shaped spore forming bacteria that is closely related to um, Bacillus cereus and anthracis that do cause diseases in humans but this is really um, host specific so this works in the alkaline gut of larvae, like mosquito larvae, fly larvae, maggots, um, and fungus gnat larvae. Now, the difference between these and um, the bits and the dunks. The bits have these little bits, essentially, that look a lot like, kind of like they're covered with corn. And this, the bacterial spores are covered with I mean, the little bits are covered with bacterial spores. Um, and these, I think I'm going to like these better than the dunks because these haven't, I've soaked these in water for all day and they haven't broken apart. Like the bits don't look like they're going to go into smaller pieces than what is already in here. The mosquito dunks, on the other hand, since I use a reservoir and a hand sprayer, I'll show you, they break up and the little tiny pieces can um, will get in my sprayer nozzle and clog it up. So I was putting a piece of mosquito dunk into a coffee filter and then rubber banding it and then putting it in one of these tea strainer balls. So sorry, I forgot to show you how tiny like these little tiny little tiny bits. They make a mess. So I don't like this for um, use in my house. Also, um, what was I going to say? These, I would have to soak these for 24 hours before they, it dispersed enough in the water to be effective. These, however, I have put some of these in a tea strainer and as soon as I poured water on it, I could see this just cloud dispersing into the water. So this is going to be effective immediately. Um, it has this, however, has little res residual activity. Like if you don't have control, well, you should have control within a day or two. But if you have problems again after that, after seven to fourteen days, you'll have to reapply this. However, the dunks are effective for up to thirty days. So if you have standing water anywhere and you put one of these in there, it's going to control the larvae for up to a month. Whereas this would only control it for a few days. Um, oh, the dunks. I've always used the dunks because they are really, really easy to find. I live in a small town and these are available everywhere like Ace Hardware, Lowe's, Fred Meyer, um, Home Depot. These, however, I have never seen these in town and I had to order these. So if you can't get these and you can only get the dunks, the dunks work just fine. You just have to soak, they're just a little more maintenance. Um, <clears throat> The other thing, okay, that's all I wanted to say about the difference between the two. They both have the same ingredient, once again. Um, okay, so how you use this, this is very, very important. The larvae have to ingest the product. So you need to either soak it in water or put these in a little thing or I don't know, it depends on what you're using. If you just use a watering can, you can use these um, without having put without having to put them in a strainer. Um, this also, you can take this out once you've used it, once you've made up a batch of water, you can dry it and then you can use it again. I don't know if you can do that with these. I'm not intending to try it out. So if anybody does try to reuse these things, let me know. Um, so the larvae have to ingest, they have to ingest the bacteria and the larvae, the fungus gnat larvae eat 
fungus. That's why they're called fungus gnats. So you have to get the product dispersed into the water, shake it up, you know, stir it, whatever, or just pour the water over like the tea strainer or over the bits and that will disperse the product in the water. And then you have to d dunk or completely drench the, uh, the medium. You have to get all of those little fungal threads and everything that's in there wet with this. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I don't think you could just mix any of these in with the potting medium. And also, after they stop being effective, whoops, this stuff is organic and it will rot too and that will attract more fungus gnats. If you have a big fungus gnat problem, you probably need to repot. Your medium might be broken down too much. So if you have a specific plant that seems to have more fungus gnats than others, take a look in it. It might need to be repotted. Um, how this kills them is they eat it and then there are these things called parasporal crystals that dissolve in the insect's gut, basically, and then those release four toxic crystal proteins. Um, and those bind to the receptors in the insect's gut and it makes it, it perforates it, I guess. It makes, and it will stop feeding. Um, they usually stop feeding within about an hour. This is for mosquitoes. I don't know about fungus gnats, but within about an hour, they stop feeding. And within six hours, they're pretty much paralyzed. Um, if you see any adults after two days, reapply it because you probably missed a spot. Other than that, um, I've never had problems with this stuff damaging the roots, um, causing phytotoxicity, nothing like that. So this is the most effective thing. This Israelinensis strain has been the most effective thing I've ever found against fungus gnats. Also, if you are going to dunk your plants, I recommend against this unless you're using, I don't know, if you have a pot with a whole bunch of holes in it, you're going to need to go in and spray in every single little hole to make sure all that medium gets covered because when you just pour water in, it will go around the holes. So make sure you do that. Um, do not share water. Don't dunk one plant in the same water as you dunked another plant. That's going to spread viruses, bacteria, and fungi. You can't tell if your plant has a virus just by looking at it. Um, lots of plants are symptomless until they get weakened or stressed or whatever and sometimes they just don't show any symptoms at all but you don't want to be spreading virus throughout your collection you can't cure that when you're mixing this up if you're using tap water you want to make sure that you let your tap water sit at least 24 hours because the chlorine in the water can kill bacteria also I wouldn't use fertilizer just in case if that could make the suppress the action of the bacteria. I wouldn't use fertilizer within a day or two. That's not really hard, you know, just fertilize a day later. Um, also yucca extract. Um, this is used a lot in hydroponics and I've started using it to see if it works really well for orchids or not, but it, I don't know, there's differing information about yucca extract and it's effective or it's a uh, action against bacteria. Like I read in some animal studies that it suppresses gram-positive bacteria, which this is, but it's also used in compost tea recipes and a lot of people who are selling things say that it's safe to use with their beneficials. <clears throat> so just in case, I wouldn't use yucca with this. It also, um, yucca has antifungal properties and it's snail repellent and um, it does all kinds of things. Living things, little living things, don't seem to like it. So I would suspect that it probably would make this less effective. Um, I think that's everything. I hope this helps some people. I really, really love this. It's pretty safe. I mean, they haven't found any toxic studies, and don't quote me on that. But toxic studies in mammals have been very... They don't show a lot of toxicity. There are some hefty warning, warning, uh, there's some hefty warning label on here, but I think for the most part, it's one of the safest things you can probably use. Um, we have really acid guts and insect larvae have alkaline guts and that's where this works. So, um, I just, 
this is, you know, something that I don't really have to worry about if my dog takes the lick out of my drainage tray, you know, I don't have to worry about her getting sick. She's actually done it and I've never, she didn't get sick. So, um, however, this is very closely related to some serious pathogens that make humans sick. So do be careful with it, you know, wear gloves, don't breathe it in, try not to touch the water, stuff like that. You know, just use common sense. It is, it is a pesticide and just because it's natural doesn't mean it's safe, okay? Um, just use your head. It's a pesticide. All right. Thanks, everybody.